Hello and welcome. My name is Alex and I'm going to be talking about Frechet distance for uncertain curves. First of all, we should define the concept of an uncertain curve. Let us look at an example. Here you see the map of a part of the city of Eindhoven in the Netherlands. In particular, you can see the railroad going in the northwestern direction that goes to another city. The city is close by, so you can also cycle there. Indeed, you can now see GPS data from Google location history. In orange you see the train journey, and in blue you see the bike trip. Suppose we want to know how similar the two trajectories are. The standard way to check is to construct polygonal curves on the data and use some distance metric, such as dynamic time warping or Frechet distance. However, the blue curve has some weird artifacts that will affect our similarity measure. In addition to the measurement location, collected data includes accuracy estimate, represented as a disk of a certain radius. It is feasible that at the time of measurement the object really was anywhere inside the disk. If we take this information into account, now this simple straight line trajectory is feasible. We can see that it will give a very different result than the polygonal curve on the measurement points. So it is important to take uncertainty into account. If we now abstract away from the precise curves, and then abstract away from the map, leaving only the sequences of disks, we get uncertain curves. They consist of uncertain points. Each uncertain point in our case is some region, and the true location of the object at measurement time lies somewhere in that region. We are thus interested in similarity of two such uncertain curves. We focus here on measurement uncertainty, and we connect measurements with line segments. We distinguish two uncertainty models, indecisive points, where the region is a discrete set of points, and imprecise points, where the region is some convex region, such as a disk or a line segment. A sequence of such regions is an indecisive or an imprecise curve. If we pick a point from each uncertainty region, we get what we call a realization of an uncertain curve. Now that we have defined the uncertainty model, let's have a brief refresher on the similarity measure we use. We use Frechet distance and discrete Frechet distance. You can think of the discrete version as Frechet distance restricted to vertices, or as dynamic time warping where you replace summation with taking the maximum. Let us have a look at an example. We consider different matchings or couplings of the vertices of two curves. We have to match the first points of the curves, then we can jump to the next vertex on the first curve, on the second curve, or on both. We can never go back along the curve. In this example, we start by matching the first points, then go forward on both curves, then only go forward on the first, then again on both. And finally, only on the second, so the last points are matched up. The distance for this matching is the bottleneck distance determined by the pair that is furthest away. Discrete Frechet distance is then such bottleneck distance for the best possible matching. Continuous Frechet distance is similar, but considers the matchings over the entire curves and not just vertices. With that in mind, we should define what we are looking at here. In these examples we have orange and blue curves. On the left, the points that are close together are possible locations for a single indecisive point. We can go over all the possible realizations of the two curves and find the one that gives us the lowest or the highest Frechet distance. For example, these realizations give us the lowest Frechet distance, which we call a lower bound. The red line shows the bottleneck in the optimal matching. And these realizations give us the upper bound distance, so the largest possible distance. Finally, if we assume some probability distribution for each uncertainty region, we can talk about expected distance. Here we assume that each location is equally likely, so we assume a uniform distribution for each uncertainty region independently. The expected distance then simply averages the distances over all the realizations. In the imprecise model, we have to take an integral to find it. Now that we know the problem we are solving, let us discuss the results we have obtained so far. First of all, 
Ann and others have already presented a polynomial time algorithm for the lower bound discrete Fréchet distance. It is shown for the disks case, but it is straightforward to extend to line segments and indecisive points. In this talk, we will be covering the rest of this table, first showing the hardness results for upper bound and expected case for both discrete and continuous Fréchet distance. In particular, we find that the decision problem for upper bound distance is NP-complete in all the models we consider, and we find that finding expected distance is number p hard in some settings. As a footnote, the class number p is the counting counterpart of NP. For instance, number sat, the problem of counting the satisfying assignments to a Boolean formula, is number p-complete. In the second part of the talk, we discuss the lower bound for continuous Fréchet distance. Somewhat surprisingly, there is a distinction between the different uncertainty models here. We show the polynomial time algorithm to compute the lower bound on indecisive curves and give intuition for the NP-hardness proof in the setting with line segments modeling the uncertainty. So, many problems turn out to be hard. We somewhat alleviated for indecisive curves by showing polynomial time algorithms for a restricted version of the problem using time bounds, a concept we shall explain later. For the lower bound for shade distance, we present two approximation algorithms. The first is a fully polynomial time approximation scheme that works in all region-based uncertainty models. The second is a near linear time three approximation in two dimensions that works if the uncertainty regions are separated. At this point, let's dive in and see what happens in the upper bound case. We will show the construction and explain how it leads to the proof for one of the settings. We consider the indecisive points model and look at the upper bound discrete Fréchet distance. We give a reduction from satisfiability problem. We construct two curves, a precise one, capturing the formula structure, and an indecisive one that has an indecisive point for every variable. Each indecisive point has two locations, corresponding to true and false, as shown on the right. Consider a specific clause of a formula and a certain variable x. For this combination we choose one of the three points on the precise curve in blue, so that if we then choose a satisfying assignment for this clause, we get a large distance. So if the clause has a literal x, we choose the bottom point, so if we assign x to be true, the distance is above 1, and otherwise it is below 1. We position the points symmetrically for the literal not x. If x does not occur in the clause, we place the point in the middle at 0, 0, so whichever assignment we choose, the distance is below 1. We do this for every variable given a clause. To ensure that we match up the right point, we introduce synchronization points. The positioning makes sure we either get the distance of 1 or 1 plus epsilon, depending on whether the clause is satisfied. Finally, we introduce synchronization points at the beginning of both curves, so the start of both curves is matched up. The need for this will become clear later. Let us explain this a bit more with an example. Here you see the entire construction. We consider a given clause and an assignment of variables corresponding to a specific realization of the orange curve. Starting with x1, we can see we get the large distance, since setting x1 to true makes the clause satisfied. With x2 the distance is small, as setting it to false does not affect the clause. Finally, x3 should be irrelevant no matter which value we assign to it, and indeed the distance is small. So we get the large distance here because of our assignment to x1. On a side note, note that all the blue points are close to the origin. Consider this construction at a higher level. We construct a precise curve by combining curves for all the clauses, and an indecisive curve by prepending and appending the origin. Suppose that, for instance, C4 is not satisfied with some variable assignment. Then the matching with the variable curve will yield a distance of 1. We can match all the other clauses 
to the origin and get the overall distance of 1. Due to the synchronization points, this is optimal. So the formula is not satisfied and we get the distance of 1. Now suppose that all clauses are satisfied. Then any of them yields the distance of 1 plus epsilon when matched to the variable curve. So, no matter which clause we choose, the best matching we can get will yield the distance 1 plus epsilon. Then the formula is satisfied and the distance is 1 plus epsilon. As we are looking at the upper bound, we are trying to find the latter case. So if a satisfying assignment exists, then some realization yields a large distance, and so the upper bound distance is large. Otherwise, it is small. We conclude that the problem is empty hard. This concludes the proof sketch for the highlighted case. The extension to the disks and line segments follows by simply replacing the uncertainty regions appropriately in our construction. The extension to Frechet distance is straightforward and only yields different distances. The expected case for the indecisive points is simple, since every realization corresponds to a single variable assignment, and so counting how many times we get a large distance corresponds to counting the number of satisfying assignments. This gets more difficult for imprecise points. We managed to come up with an extension that allows us to tackle the line segment case for the discrete Frechet distance, but the other cases get mathematically complicated quickly in our construction, although we believe they should be hard too. We have seen that the problems we consider are hard in many settings. We shall now introduce the concept of time bands to alleviate the issue in some restricted scenarios. The standard algorithm computing the discrete Frechet distance uses dynamic programming on the prefixes of the curves. If we consider the decision problem, then we simply fill out the Boolean values in the table. In this example, the highlighted cell corresponds to matching the third point on one curve and the second point on the other curve, and any monotone path from the bottom left cell corresponds to traversing a valid matching up to the current point. If we consider all the couplings, we find that the number is quite high, this is prohibitively expensive in the upper bound problem. So we aim to reduce the number of options we need to consider by introducing time bounds. The example shows the time bound of width 1, so the ith point on one curve can only be matched to the ith point on the other curve, or the one before, or the one after. Similarly, the grayed out cells in the table are now not considered. Using this concept makes sense in the scenarios where curves are regularly sampled or represent some form of interaction between objects, so where we want to enforce similarity in time and the point indices act as proxy for timestamps. We do not have the time to go into detail, so we just describe the results. All of them are done by a somewhat technical but reasonably straightforward dynamic program. We fix some constant width w of the time bound and consider indecisive curves of n points with l options per point. In the simplest case, where one curve is precise, we get the running time polynomial in l and n, but exponential in w for the upper bound discrete Frechet distance. If both curves are indecisive, the dependency on l to the power of 2w plus 1 is less nice, but it is still fine for small w and l. We can extend the result to the expected value computation. Finally, we can also obtain polynomial time algorithms for continuous Frechet distance. This involves more technicalities, but the algorithms still run in time polynomial in N. We have discussed a plethora of hardness results in the upper bound and expected case, and a restricted version for indecisive points model that allows us to compute the distance in polynomial time. We will now talk about the lower bound case. It has been solved for the discrete Frechet distance, so we focus on continuous Frechet distance. As we shall see, here the exact setting is important. First of all, we discuss the algorithm for finding the lower bound Frechet distance on indecisive curves. Suppose we are given a precise curve and an indecisive curve, and we need to check whether the lower bound distance is below a given threshold. If we could fix the realization for the indecisive curve, we could use the standard approach for computing Frechet distance on two polygonal curves. 
We don't know which realization is the best yet, so we proceed point by point along the indecisive curve and consider all the realizations for the current point as feasible extensions of the previous prefixes. We never revisit the vertices of the indecisive curve that we have passed, so we do not need to remember any choices of realizations we made previously. So we can just take the union of all the reachable locations on the two curves after considering all of the realizations of the current point and take that as the starting set for the next point. This gives us a dynamic program running in time O of m and k squared. So we have a straightforward polynomial time solution in this setting. Now we will talk about the setting where the uncertainty regions are modeled by line segments. We show NP-hardness of the decision problem by reduction from subset sum. Recall that in the subset sum problem we are given a set of numbers and a target, and we are asked if we can select some of the numbers so that they sum up to the target. This problem is NP-complete. In the problem we consider, we are given a precise curve, an uncertain curve, and a threshold for the Frechet distance. We are asked if we can select the realizations of the points so that the Frechet distance is below the threshold. Consider an uncertain curve with three vertical segments. In the picture they are shown at coordinates 0, 1 and 2. Suppose the realization starts at some arbitrary height h, has to pass through one of the two points at 0 0.5, and has to pass through 0 at 1.5. The picture on the right shows the possible realizations that satisfy these conditions. Clearly the last realization then has to be either at height h, so where we started, or at height h plus 2 times si. We can glue n of such uncertain curves together, so every time we can make a choice on whether we want to pass through minus si or 0. Assume we start at height 0 for the first such curve, Denote by i the indices where we use the minus as i point. Then the height at the end is twice the sum of these as i. If we now ask whether we can end up at height 2 tau on the last segment, we solve subset sum. So, assuming we can make sure that our realizations follow these rules, we can show that the problem is NP hard. The main question now is. How do we do this? Using the certain curve, we can build gadgets that force the realization to go through a certain point, or to make a choice between two points. We don't have the time to go into detail, so please read our paper if you'd like to know more. Now that we have shown NP hardness for the lower bound for shade distance in some models, we discuss what we can do about it. Note that here we talk about general uncertainty regions, so not only line segments. On the right is an example of such an uncertainty region. The main idea is that we can leverage our indecisive case algorithm to construct an approximation by discretizing the regions. We place a suitably sized grid over our regions. Then we construct an indecisive point per region, where the options are the grid points. We place the orange points at the grid vertices in a way that approximates our region appropriately. Now the orange points are all the options for the single indecisive point we construct. Having done this for all the regions, we can use the indecisive case algorithm. This gives us a 1 plus epsilon approximation that is a fully polynomial time approximation scheme, given bounds on the uncertain region diameters relative to the Frechet distance. We have also devised a greedy approximation approach for disjoint imprecise regions. Again, we are given a precise and an uncertain curve. On the right, the orange regions are the uncertainty regions, and the blue curve is the precise curve. The band around the curve has width delta, so the realization we pick for the uncertain curve has to stay within that band. The main idea of the approach is that we try to go as far as possible along the precise curve, and we pick the point in the uncertainty region that allows us to do that. 
In this example, the first gray point is the furthest we can go along the blue curve for any realization of U1. We pick the orange point from U1. The second gray point is again the furthest we can go for any choice of orange points from U2. We continue in this manner for the entire curve. If the uncertainty regions overlap, it is easy to walk too far, and then we can't pick any suitable points anymore. However, if the regions are convex and O of delta separated, then this approach gives us a near linear time 3 approximation. To summarize, we have first covered the hardness results for the upper bound and expected case in different models for both discrete and continuous Fourier distance, with the focus on the simplest case discrete Fourier distance in the indecisive setting. For indecisive trajectories, we discuss polynomial time algorithms for constant width bands for all the applicable cases. Then we discussed the lower bound Fourier distance. We presented a polynomial time algorithm for the indecisive case. Then we showed NP hardness in the line segment model. Finally, we showed two approximation algorithms. One that works by discretizing the regions in the general case, and one that runs in near linear time but only works in two dimensions and for imprecise separated regions. This concludes the talk. Please contact me or other authors if you have any questions, and thank you for listening.